ASC warriors i hope you are doing well welcome back to my channel my name is prachi and in today's session after so many requests we are finally covering acids bases and salts in a one shot video i can definitely assure you one thing that if you follow through the entire video you won't need to look at your textbook revise anything from the textbook or do anything from there I will provide a whole set of notes by the end of the sessions print out the notes and you are good to go the session of the entire chapter is divided into three parts acids questions based on that bases questions based on that and then salts so therefore this video is slightly longer than you expect but it has covered every minute detail that you need to know from this particular chapter So if you think you're scared of this chapter and you're not able to cope up I think this is a good time to start. So let's get into the video and let's get started. Okay students, let's get started with the chapter. Now these are my handwritten notes which have all the minute details that you need. I will be sharing these after the session. If you want to write as we go along then you can keep pausing the video in between and take notes of whatever you need. If at any particular point you think you're not able to follow drop a comment in the comment section and I will revert back. So let's get started with acids. So this is the first part of the one shot. So this is acids. Now what does the word acid mean? So acid means acidus which means sour and we know that acids taste sour. So that is where the acid word came in. Then If we talk about acids in general so acids are those compounds which when dissolved in water will give you H+ ions or hydronium ions that is H3O positive as the only positive charged ions so let's look at that the word acid comes from the latin word acidus which means sour in fact the sour taste some foods in some foods that we have the sour taste is because of the acids they contain okay so that could be your example for orange grapes so these all contain certain type of acid that will give a sour taste to the particular fruit now definition of acids this can be asked in the exam acids are defined as the compounds which when dissolved in water produces h plus ions or h3 o positive ions as the only positively charged ions now let's look at the breakdown of hcl so for example you have an acid hcl now you add water to it what are the what are the ions you get you get h plus plus chlorine negative ions okay similarly if we move on h2so4 so you'll get 2h plus plus so4 two minus ions hno3 would be h plus plus NO3 minus ions CH3COO so this is acetic acid so this would give you CH3COO negative plus H plus ions now the one thing that we need to remember here is whenever acids break down or they ionize themselves only those H ions will come out which are replaceable not all of them that means if we talk about acetic acid you can see that we have ch3coo and you have 3h's there but those 3h's are not replaceable okay so and along with that you are getting 1h plus ion and then you have 3h's with the compound itself so uh, ch3coo negative plus h plus ion so only those h plus ions will come out which are displaceable not all now when we say h3o positive ion what is h3o positive ion it is hydronium ion what do we mean by hydronium ion so when your acid ionizes and it breaks down when we mix water into it we get h plus ion correct this h plus ion is very highly unstable okay so it will combine with the water molecule present that is a plus h2o and this will give us h3o positive ions let me repeat myself the h plus ion that we get is highly unstable they end up combining with water to give us h3o positive ion 
known as hydronium ion so let's look at that you can get this information from right here now let's say you want to write an equation in which instead of h plus ion you want to write hydronium ion in the by product so instead of writing h2o on the arrow you will write it along with hcl so if you have hcl plus water then you can write h3o positive plus cl minus ions if you have water written along with the acid if you have it written over the arrow like this then you'll end up writing h plus ion i hope this much makes sense so far now so naturally occurring acids so you would have seen this um, graph or i mean this uh, chart in your books so let's quickly take a look at these you have to remember them because these can show up in multiple choice questions one markers they can ask you which acid is present in vinegar which acid is present in citrus fruits so you should know the acid name so let's quickly go through few of them so vinegar is acetic acid that is your ch3 coh then you have citrus fruits you have citric acid gastric juice is hydrochloric acid which is present in our digestive tract then we have sting of bees that is formic acid let's look at tomatoes oxalic acid apples grapes and tamarind has tartaric acid urine has uric acid so i just went through a few random of randomly but you have to remember all of them since this is a one shot video we would have a faster pace as moving along with the chapter and if you're not able to follow through in this one then i would suggest you go ahead and look at the playlist in which i have done every part with with a slower pace so let's go ahead and continue now we have classification of acids in classification of acids we have in total five classifications that we will discuss today so the first one is strong acids and weak acids now strong acids are the one acids which when dissolved in water produces a large number of h plus ions are called strong acids large number as in that let's say you are dissolving uh, 10 molecules of an acid into water so approximately 8 to 10 molecules will ionize that means they will produce h plus ion so the more number of h plus ions that we get on ionization of the acid the more strength of the acid when we talk about weak acids so acids which when dissolved in water produces a less number of h plus ions are called weak acids the example that we have here would be hcl h2so4 hno3 what are these hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid nitric acid these form ions in the solution when you look at the solution these have ions in them when we talk about weak acids let's say now you have 10 molecules of an acid only 4 3 or 4 approximately ions will be formed of h plus others will stay as molecules so a solution of a weak acid will contain ions as well as molecules so i hope this much makes sense and examples could be carbonic acid acetic acid okay now they can ask you where what acid contains only ions in a solution then you have to tell it's strong acids and you can give examples similarly they can ask what kind of acid contains ions as well as molecules in the solution then you can work on the weak acids and you can write any example from that moving ahead to depending on their source organic acids inorganic acids or mineral acids so organic acids acids which generally now which are generally obtained from plants are called organic acids they contain carbon hydrogen along with that so they have carbon and hydrogen the examples can be oxalic acid that is cooh acetic acid that is ch3cooh when we talk about organic acids organic acids are generally weak weak acids again what are weak acids the ones which have less h plus ions coming out so those are weak acids inorganic or mineral acids acids which are generally obtained from minerals are called inorganic acids okay they do not contain carbon except 
except carbonic acid that is H2CO3. So let's highlight this for you. So they do not contain carbon except carbonic acid and inorganic acids are generally very strong as acids again very strong acids except carbonic acid so we'll highlight this also so now what do we understand from organic inorganic acids so far they are coming from minerals they do not contain carbon except carbonic acid they are strong acids except carbonic acid and the examples can be hcl sulfuric acid nitric acid I hope this much makes sense to you. Let's move on to the third category that is oxy acids and hydra acids. So oxy acid, now this is depending upon the molecular comp composition that means what are they made up of? What all elements do we have in the acid formula? So the first one is oxy acids which contain oxygen along with hydrogen and some other element X. That means if we look at this so oxygen hydrogen and X. X is the other element. Now let's talk about hydra acids. Hydra acids which contain hydrogen and a non-metallic element but no oxygen. Okay, so that is the difference. No oxygen in hydra acids. So they do contain hydrogen. They would contain a non-metallic element but they will not contain oxygen. Let's look at the examples. Of oxy acids we have oxalic acid COOH sulfuric acid H2SO4 acetic acid CH3COOH and on the other side we have HBr that is hydrobromic acid then we have HCl that is hydrochloric acid so I hope this makes sense moving on depending upon their concentration this is the easiest classification of all so depending on the concentration we have concentrated acid and we have dilute acid so acids which contain very small amount of water or no water at all is a concentrated acid. On the other hand, we have dilute acid. So an acid which contain far more amount of water than its own composition. That means acid is less, water is more, is a dilute acid. So that's it for the fourth part. Moving on to the fifth one, we have depending on their basicity. So basicity of an acid is defined as the number of hydrogen ions produced when one molecule of an acid is dissolved in water. So that means, uh, let's say you have uh, HCl. Okay, In HCl we have seen so far that, let's say we have HCl, we are dissolving one molecule of HCl in water. So you will get H plus plus Cl minus ions. So how many displaceable hydrogens do you have? You have one H plus coming out. So this is the this is what identifies the basicity of an acid. If my acid is giving me two hydrogen ions from one molecule, that means it is a diabasic acid. So let's look at the definition of basicity again. Basicity of an acid is defined as the number of hydrogen ions produced. So the number of hydrogen ions produced when one molecule of an acid is dissolved in water. For example, let's uh, now for example this one. This has the basicity of 1. So if you have, let's say you have H2SO4. So H2SO4 when we add water to that, that will give me 2 of H plus ions plus SO4 2 minus ions. So when I have two H plus ions coming out, I would say that basicity of it would be two. Okay. So basicity you have to figure out once you ionize the compound by adding it to water. So let's look at the examples and different types that we need to do. So the first is monobasic acid. So one hydrogen ion is produced when one molecule of an acid is dissolved in water. So one hydrogen when one molecule is dissolved in water. Diabasic acid is two hydrogen ions when one molecule is dissolved in water. Tribasic is three hydrogen when one molecule is dissolved in water. Let's look at the examples. 
for the uh, mono basic that is one hydrogen coming out you have hbr hno3 ch3 cooh h2so4 then you have uh, h2co3 that is carbonic acid h2so3 then for the for third one that is tri basic acid you have h3po4 that is phosphoric acid now you also have one more example to learn for the case when you have the basicity as 4 that is silicic acid that is h4sio4 so you'll have to remember this as an as one of the examples for basicity 4 just one example to learn then when we talk about exception so you have h3po3 now if we come back on tri basic h3po4 is a tri basic acid but H3PO3 is a diabasic acid. The reason behind that is one of the H's does not separate from the molecule. So you only have two displaceable hydrogens. One of the hydrogen does not move from its place. That is the reason it becomes diabasic acid. When you ionize it, one stays with the compound. Two of them gets displaced. So let's look at that. So Uh, H3PO3 is a diabasic acid because in oxy acids of phosphorus hydrogen atoms which are attached to oxygen does not are replaceable and the other ones hydrogen atoms directly bonded to phosphorus are not replaceable okay so the ones which are directly attached with phosphorus are not replaceable so this one is not replaceable other hydrogen atoms are replaceable so this you have to remember as an exception again now moving on we have preparation of acids so the first is by synthesis that is the easiest one by synthesis we get binary acids what are binary acids binary acids are when you have acids which contain only two elements very simple two elements you can have hcl you can have hbr you can have h2s that is hydrogen sulfide so how do we prepare that you have hydrogen plus chlorine which gives you 2hcl hydrogen plus bromine gives you 2hbr hydrogen plus sulfur gives you h2s so that's it for that now moving on by the action of water on non metallic or acidic oxide or acid anhydride so first let's look at slight a little bit of background of this what is metallic oxide now okay metallic oxide you can take an example like na2o you can take an example calcium oxide cao so metallic oxides are generally known as basic anhydride okay so why do we call it basic anhydride that is because when you add water to it you get a base plus water you get caoh whole twice so when you add water to such uh, for to metallic oxides you end up getting a base this is a base that is that is why we call it basic anhydride okay so when we say by the action of water on acid anhydride what is acid anhydride now non metallic oxides non metallic oxides you can take example of co2 you can take example of so2 you add water to this what do you get you get h3 h2 co3 that is carbonic acid that is what you get h2co3 so this is a non metallic oxide so this is acidic in nature so this we call acidic anhydride so preparation of acid so by the action of water on acid anhydride acid anhydride can also be written as non metallic or acidic oxides any of the names would mean the same thing moving on look let's look at the reactions so you have co2 plus h2o you're getting carbonic acid so2 plus h2o you're getting sulfurous acid so3 plus h2o you're getting h2so4 p2o5 that is phosphorus pentoxide plus water is giving you h3po4 n2o5 plus water is giving you hno3 that is nitric acid now note no2 okay no2 is a non metallic oxide NO2 is called a mixed or double acid anhydride. Why is that? That is because when we have uh, NO2 and it reacts with water, it gives you two different acids. It gives you nitrous acid as well as nitric acid. 
and since it is giving you two acids it is known as double acid anhydride so if you have a regular acid anhydride you are getting one acid in the byproducts and if you get if we call it a uh, double acid anhydride that means you get two acids in the byproducts so this you have to remember separately that is no2 is called mixed or double acid anhydride because it reacts with water to form nitrous and nitric acid they can ask you this separately that is i have no2 plus water what are my byproducts so you should know this reaction 2NO2 plus water gives me HNO2 plus HNO3. I hope this much is clear so far. If you are not uh, able to understand, pause it, go back a bit. Still not able to follow? Drop a message in the comment section. Moving on to the third part, by the oxidation of non-metals. Okay, so you have non-metals, and we oxidize non-metals using nitric acid. Why are we using nitric acid? Nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent. So what happens when we oxidize a non-metal? So you have S plus HNO3 gives you H2SO4 plus water and NO2. Okay. Same happens with phosphorus. Phosphorus plus HNO3 you get H3PO4, water and NO2. The NO2 gas that you are getting is reddish brown in color. So you have to remember that separately that NO2 is reddish brown in color. All right. Moving on by displacement. So you have a no normal salt, and you have a more volatile acid. What is volatile? That means when you have chances of the acid being vaporized into air, would mean volatile. When I say that one acid is extremely volatile, that means if you leave the jar open at room temperature, it would slowly vanish away. And your jar would become empty. So that is more volatile acids. So more volatile acid will displace a less, displace a salt, and will give you a less or non-volatile acid. So let's look at the examples. So this type, these type of reactions are temperature sensitive. So if you, these reaction would also happen when you have a temperature less than 200 degrees Celsius, and it would also happen when you have the temperature more than 200 degrees Celsius. So let's look at the examples here. NaCl plus H2SO4 will give me NaHSO4 plus HCl when the temperature is less than 200 degrees Celsius. Now this and this reaction are important because both of them are preparation reactions and they will get repeated when you are doing hydrogen chloride. That is the eighth chapter. So both of these reactions are highly important. You should learn them very well. Then NaCl plus H2SO4, when the temperature is higher than 200 degrees Celsius, would give me Na2SO4 and HCl. So you're still getting HCl. Now NaNO3 plus H2SO4 at a temperature smaller than 200 degrees Celsius will give me NaHSO4 plus HNO3. So you're getting nitric acid here. And NaNO3 plus H2SO4 at temperature above 200 degrees Celsius will give me Na2SO4 plus HNO3 that is nitric acid again. Moving on to properties of acids. If you want to quickly revise, you can go back and revise. How do you revise it? So you think about a non-metal, for example, you are revising the third point. So you revise it like, okay, I had a non-metal, I am oxidizing it with uh, nitric acid. I would get one acid, water and NO2. So acid, you can identify what acid you are getting based on you are taking sulfur or phosphorus. Okay. So think about it, a non-metal, I combine it with nitric acid, I get the acid plus water plus NO2. Just revise it like that. So when you are writing in the exam, you won't get confused, you will know what you are talking about. Now moving on to properties of acids. So the first is physical properties. So the physical properties, the first thing we do is the taste. So how do acids taste? They, they taste sour. So not all acids are to be tasted, okay? We have a lot of concentrated acids that can really burn your tongue, that can really cause blisters on the tongue. So you are not supposed to taste all of them. Somebody already tasted the dilute acid, so we know the taste of acids is sour. So sour in taste. Then physical state. So we have some acids which are solid in state 
and some acids at liquid in state we do not have any gas acids right now because when we talk about gas that also is from the same acids that we have the liquid acids from so let's talk about solid acids you have boric acid oxalic acid tartaric acid citric acid and phosphoric acid as the solid acids talking about liquid acids acetic acid formic acid then you have carbonic acid hcl nitric acid sulfurous and sulfuric acid now sulfuric acid is extremely important to remember that it is non non volatile acid so that means this is used in a lot of lab preparations why because it's a non volatile acid if you leave it open it will not vaporize so you will not lose a huge chunk of your acid because of its volatile nature therefore sulfuric acid is used in a lot of lab preparations non volatile acid now effect on skin as i just mentioned it will cause burns on your skin so corrosive in nature now concentrated h2so4 will turn your skin black now sometimes if you would have seen someone coming back from a chemistry lab and they were working on some experiment and their hand is slightly blackish in shade that is because they were working with h2so4 definitely in school you work with dilute h2so4 and some portion came on the skin and the skin turns black concentrated hno3 turns our skin yellow and concentrated hcl turns it in amber so these colors can be asked in multiple choice questions now action on indicators this we would definitely know so far that blue litmus is turned red in an acid methyl orange is turned pink and phenolphthalein remains colorless in acid solution then we have some natural indicators natural indicators first we have red cabbage extract so red cabbage extract remains red when we talk about acidic solutions turmeric shows no effect in acidic solutions then we move on to olfactory indicators what is olfactory indicators so in our nose we have a nerve called called as olfactory nerve so olfactory indicators are the ones which are related to the smell of the solution so any change in smell in acidic or basic solution are the olfactory indicators you have three examples here you have vanilla extract onion extract and clove oil all three of them have a strong scent so if you put them in acidic solution what kind of change will we observe if we put it in basic solution what kind of change we will observe will uh, help us identify what we are talking about in olfactory indicators moving on to the fifth point they are electrolytes of course they are electrolytes because they can conduct electricity how do we know they can conduct electricity because acids will always ionize either the ionization would be high or ionization would be low but acid will always ionize like for example if you remember we discussed in strong acids and weak acids strong acids more ions very strong conduction of electricity weak acids less ions so less conduction of electricity but both of them will conduct electricity now we can move ahead to chemical properties highly highly important portion so students let's just breathe in breathe out we are starting with the chemical properties of acids so if you want to have water just quickly drink some water and have a fresh mind for this part so chemical properties reaction with active metals so you have an acid reacting with an active metal what do we get okay the first thing you have to remember is that the most active metals that we have potassium sodium calcium if they react with acid the reaction is explosive therefore we do not react our acids with the top active metals we react them with the mediocre metals that could be your magnesium zinc iron so you react dilute acid with these metals so magnesium plus hcl you get a salt and you get hydrogen gas coming out so mg plus 2 hcl will give me mgcl2 plus h2 Zn plus 2 HCl will give me ZnCl2 plus H2. Fe plus H2SO4 will give me FeSO4 plus H2. So what do we remember here? The first thing we remember is, do not react potassium, sodium, calcium. Very very explosive. What do we work with? We work with dilute HCl, dilute H2SO4, 
and what do we react we react magnesium zinc and iron now nitric acid over here if you see you have hydrogen being prepared okay but we do not use nitric acid for the preparation of hydrogen gas what is the reason behind it the reason is that nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing agent so when hydrogen gas is released it oxidizes hydrogen and forms water with it so it will instead of hydrogen coming out we'll have water coming out so the logic or the concept of hydrogen gas preparation is definitely lost so we do not use nitric acid with all the metals but nitric acid in a very 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 dilute state does react with two metals that is manganese and magnesium okay let's quickly revise this nitric acid very strong oxidizing agent is not used for the preparation of hydrogen gas why because it oxidizes hydrogen and forms water that's first part but extremely extremely dilute nitric acid that is 1% concentration of nitric acid can react with magnesium and manganese to give us hydrogen gas so let's look at this nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing agent so should not be used for the preparation of hydrogen it oxidizes hydrogen to form water thus defeats the purpose of the reaction only manganese and magnesium react with very very dilute nitric acid how dilute 1% acid let's look at the equations manganese mn plus hno3 gives me mnno3 whole twice plus hydrogen gas magnesium plus hno3 gives me mgno3 whole twice plus hydrogen gas so my wonderful warriors what have we discussed in the first point of chemical properties do not use potassium sodium calcium use only magnesium iron and zinc second point nitric acid oxid is an oxidizing agent will not give you hydrogen combines with hydrogen gives us water so very very dilute nitric acid can be used but with what with manganese and magnesium so this is the first part of chemical properties moving on to the second part reaction with bases that means acid plus base will give me salt plus water so you can remember any of the examples that you want over here i have two of these there are ample number of regular examples for neutralization you can put in anything so h2so4 plus cuo will give you cuso4 plus h2o hno3 plus naoh will give me nano3 plus h2o moving on to the third one reaction with carbonates and bicarbonates what is a carbonate carbonate is co3 what is a bicarbonate it is an hco3 so carbonate is co3 bicarbonate is hco3 whenever whenever you have a carbonate reacting with something you get carbon dioxide in the by product always remember that and if they ask you in the exam in the reverse way that for example a compound is being reacted with an acid you are getting uh, carbon dioxide in the by product along with salt and water so what kind of radical reacted with the acid so you can easily say a carbonate reacted with the acid so you don't have to just learn the reaction in the sequence you have to know in the backward also so if i have carbon dioxide coming out i definitely have a carbonate or a bicarbonate reacting okay remember that so carbonate slash bicarbonate plus acid will give me salt water carbon dioxide okay students carbonate will always give me carbon dioxide take any carbonate that you like cso3 for example cso3 plus hcl is giving me cacl2 plus water plus carbon dioxide then next if you have a bicarbonate cacho3 whole twice hcl cacl2 plus water plus carbon dioxide only the balancing would change your products will stay the same okay moving on to reaction with sulfites and bisulfites sulfites are so3 bisulfites are hso3 whenever whenever you have sulfites you get sulfur dioxide in the by product so sulfite or bisulfite will give me sulfur dioxide so let's look at the reaction caso3 plus hcl will give me cacl2 
plus H2O plus SO2. NaHSO3 plus HCl will give me NaCl plus water plus SO2. So what have we covered here? Sulfides or bisulfides will give me sulfur dioxide on reacting with acid. You can pick up any metal. Let's say you're picking up Ca. Combine it to form a sulfide. React it with acid. So you can make any of the reactions on your own. Moving on to the fifth part. Reaction with sulfides. If I have a metal sulfide, reacting with an acid, I get salt and hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is a rotten egg smelling gas. They can ask you a question. A compound X is reacting with an acid, giving us a rotten egg smelling gas. What kind of compound reacted? Or what is the radical of the compound? So you should know that it will be a sulfide. Only a metal sulfide or a sulfide compound will give you hydrogen sulfide that is the rotten smelling uh, gas that you have. So the first thing is you should know what the gases smell like or what is the distinguishing feature of the gases. For example, if you remember NO2 is a reddish brown gas. CO2 turns lime water milky. So these are some things that you need to remember. So hydrogen sulfide gas, rotten egg smell. Metal sulfide. ZNS plus HCl will give me ZNCl2 plus H2O. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. ZNCl2 plus H2S. FES plus H2SO4 will give me FESO4 plus H2S. Moving on to the sixth part. Reaction with chlorides and nitrates. Okay. Very, very, very important. Alright. Now. When we have chlorides and nitrates, our HCl and H2SO4 will react in dilute only with the few compounds that is your barium that is Ba and lead that is Pb. Other than that, HCl and H2SO4 only react in the concentrated state and that too when you have the temperature regulated. That means you are warming it up. So we have two different types of reactions happening in this case. The first is with dilute HCl and dilute H2SO4. So BaCl2 plus H2SO4 is giving me 2 HCl plus BaSO4 as a precipitate. Then lead PbNO3 whole twice plus H2SO4 is giving me HNO3 plus PbSO4. That is again your precipitate. Same thing is happening in the third reaction. Now. The next part is when you have concentrated HCl and concentrated H2SO4. So NaCl plus H2SO4 at a temperature smaller than 200 degrees Celsius. This again, we are doing this again, again, important, important. Gets repeated so many times. NaCl plus H2SO4 at a temperature smaller than 200 degrees Celsius will give me NaHSO4 plus HCl. This is concentrated acids, all of them. Now KNO3 plus H2SO4 will give me KHSO4 plus HNO3. In this you have nitric acid being produced. In the above you have HCl acid being produced. Then KNO3 plus H2SO4 will give me K2SO4 plus HNO3 at a temperature higher than 200 degrees Celsius. So guys let's come back on chemical properties real quick and spend two minutes on here. Okay. Reaction with active metals, potassium, sodium, calcium should not react. Explosive. Magnesium, zinc, iron can react with dilute HCl and dilute H2SO4. Nitric acid, very strong oxidizing agent, should not be used to prepare hydrogen gas. What would happen if we prepare hydrogen gas with that? It forms water. What kind of metals can react with very, very dilute nitric acid? manganese and magnesium the equations are here then reaction with bases if i have a base i will get salt plus water if i have carbonate or bicarbonate carbonate or bicarbonate reacting with an acid will give me carbon dioxide with water and salt if i have sulfides or bisulfides i get sulfur dioxide with water and salt if I have reaction with sulfides, 
I get hydrogen sulfide along with the salt. Moving on to reaction with chlorides and nitrates. So not all chlorides and nitrates react with dilute HCl. Few of them react react with concentrated HCl and concentrated H2SO4. So which reactions do we have for dilute? I have barium and lead nitrates. So barium and lead nitrates equations are given. And then we have concentrated ones. So for that you can use sodium and you can use potassium. So NaCl plus KNO3. So any of the reactions you can use. Now moving on to uses of acids. Boric acid generally used in eye wash. Citric acid it is used in uh, food preservation and it is also used in uh, formation of vitamin C. Okay. Oxalic acid it is generally used in ink stain removers. Carbonic acid is used in flavored drinks like uh, your Pepsi, Coke. All of them have carbonic acid in that. Tartaric acid is your baking powder. Acetic acid is your table vinegar, the one that we use for cooking. Then you have hydrochloric acid that is used to clean metal items. So metal items would be in, uh, for example, at industrial level. We have machines working throughout the day. So those machines get a lot of grease on it. So to clean that, we use hydrochloric acid. Then benzoic acid, preservation of food, making perfumes. Nitric acid is used as a compound in making explosives. Phosphoric acid is used in fertilizers. Now, let's move on to some common questions from acids. So first of all, dear students, this is how much we have in acids. All the details, all the exceptions and all the equations. So if you have not understood anything so far, don't hesitate to drop a comment in the comment section. And if you think it was a wonderful session so far, make sure you share this with your friends also. And now, if you have understood everything, we are coming on some common questions from the portion that we have covered. So let's look at these common questions. So name a non-volatile acid. We have sulfuric acid. What is the acid anhydride of sulfurous acid? Very, very good question. So we can come back on here. In preparations, we have acid anhydrides. Okay, we are not talking about sulfurous acid. So when we are talking about sulfurous acid, which is this one, acid anhydride would be SO2. Okay, they can ask you the same thing for carbonic acid. They can ask you for sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid. Okay, they can ask you the acid anhydride. So you should know acid anhydride is that metallic oxide which on combining with water gave you that particular acid. So very easy, you have SO2 as the acid anhydride for sulfurous acid. Let's move on to other questions. What is the basicity of CH3COH and H3PO3? We have covered this today. Actually, we have covered all the questions today, but I would like you to give the answer in the comment section for this part. Which acids when dissolved in water will only have ions in it? Give example. So you have strong acids. Strong acids, you can take up anything. You can take up HCl. You can take up nitric acid, HNO3. Those would be your examples. So strong acids are the ones which on dissolving in water will have only ions present in them. Now, fifth question, which acids will not completely ionize in water? Not completely ionize in water means they will have molecules and ions. That is weak acids. And then you can take an example, let's say acetic acid, CH3COH. Then, what is hydronium ion? Very easy, hydronium ion is H plus, plus water will give me H3O positive. They can also ask you the uh, structure of H3O positive, so you should know that also. Now, why is NO2 called mixed or double acid anhydride? The reason is on combining it with water, we get two different acids, nitrous and nitric acid. Question 8. Why is nitric acid not used in the preparation of hydrogen gas? It is a very, very strong oxidizing agent combined with hydrogen to make water. 
therefore we do not generally prefer nitric acid in preparation of hydrogen gas if the question is for more than one mark then you can also give that nitric acid in a very very dilute state can combine with magnesium and manganese to give us hydrogen gas if the question is for 3 marks then go ahead give the equations if not then you are good to go now on reaction of an acid with a compound a we get sulfur dioxide in the products what type of compound a is so you'll have sulfide or bisulfide then on reaction of an acid with a compound x a rotten egg smelling gas is released what type of compound is x so that would be again sulfide or <coughs> this one you have sulfides and in the previous one you had sulfides or bisulfides okay acid present in vinegar grapes and lemon now you guys will tell me the answer for this one again i'm marking this that i'm expecting you to answer in the comment section for this one and hydronium one no this one basicity one so these two questions are supposed to be answered in the comment section now preparation of a non volatile acid from a volatile acid again we have done a lot of examples of these i would like you to mention the answer in the comment section question 13 give reaction of acids with nitrates and mention the conditions you are using okay so in this case you can pick up any of those that means if you are taking dilute acids use barium or lead if you are using concentrated one then you can use potassium or sodium so whatever you are using if you are using the concentrated ones you also have to mention the temperature if you are using the dilute acids one then you just have to mention the equations no temperature now how to make dilute acid from concentrated acid this is an interesting one not really important but we have not covered it today so interesting question so what happens is i have concentrated acid and i have water how do i make my acid dilute by mixing water in it now the basic concept that we get is that i have concentrated acid in one test tube i have water in one test tube i pour water into the acid do not do that okay if you do that what happens is the water the acid splashes out why does that happen as soon as the water droplets reach the concentrated acid the temperature rises and steam is formed as soon as steam is formed the steam comes out and along with the steam your acid will also come out and this may cause severe burns to the person doing this okay this is an exothermic and a uh, very uh, high amount of heat is generated exothermic reaction so how do we do that so what do we do in this case is you have water in a beaker or a test tube and you have a test tube let's say right here and this has concentrated acid so you have to add concentrated acid drop by drop into the water and with a stirrer you keep rotating it so you keep mixing it so with this method what happens is very small amount of acid touches the water and since water amount is high it will quickly dissolve it in so this is the safest approach that we use for diluting our acid that is concentrated in nature so i hope this much is clear this is where we conclude acids and move ahead to bases if you have any concerns and doubts let me know as if not let's continue further to bases okay students so let's start it with the part of bases this is the second part of the one shot video so in bases we'll begin with the basic understanding of what do we understand by base of whatever from what whatever you have studied so far from your uh, lower classes like 8th and 9th so what are bases so bases are the compounds which we dissolve in water and we get oh negative ions from that all right so let's look at that so i have na oh in presence of water i get na plus plus oh negative ions similarly you can take an example caoh whole twice you add water to that 
and you get Ca2 plus plus two OH negative ions. And similarly, you can try for aluminium. Now, this is what we have studied from lower classes. Now, let's understand what do we understand now? Okay. So, bases generally have a metal attached with OH negative. That means your sodium, calcium, aluminium, all of these are metals attached with uh, hydroxide. Okay. Now, ammonium hydroxide is an exception in which ammonia is not a metal. It is attached with an hydroxide and that gives you a base. So, what have we understood so far? We have understood that your bases have a metal attached with OH negative and ammonium hydroxide is an exception in that case. So you have NH4OH in the presence of water giving you NH plus, NH4 plus plus OH negative ion. Now what is the definition as per your 10th grade? Okay, the one that we expect you to write. So that definition is a base is either a metallic oxide or a metallic hydroxide or the exception that we just did or ammonium hydroxide which reacts with an acid to form salt and water only okay so now what are the keywords for this definition the keywords would be metallic oxide metallic hydroxide ammonium hydroxide an acid a salt only only is the most important keyword in this case we will move forward and see why is only so important to be written in the answer. So let's look at some examples for now. You have CuO, MgOH whole twice, NH4OH. These are your bases. Now let's look at the reactions in which your bases combine with an acid to give you salt and water only. So CuO plus HCl will give you CuCl2 plus h 2 Similarly, MgOH whole twice plus H2SO4 would give you MgSO4 plus H2O. Similarly, moving forward, ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH plus HCl will give you NH4Cl plus H2O. So these are your regular bases and they react with acid to give you salt and water only. Now let's move on to the note. That is importance of the word only. What is the importance of this word? So, PbO2 is also a metallic oxide, which is not a base. Why is that? That is because when our PbO2 reacts with an acid, it gives you water and chlorine gas along with that. So, you get a salt plus water plus chlorine gas along with that. So, therefore, it is not a base because along with salt and water, you have an extra product that is chlorine. So let's look at this. So PbO2 is a metallic oxide, but it is not a base. Why is that? That is because it forms chlorine gas along with salt and water when reacted with an acid. So this is important to remember. That is the reason if you are writing the definition for base, the word only has a lot of meaning. Now, let's move on to what are alkalis. So, so far we have understood what are bases. Now, we'll come to understand what are alkalis. So, alkali is any base which is soluble in water. So, once you mix that base in water and it gives you OH negative ions, that means it is an alkali. Let's look at the definition. The bases which are soluble in water and produce OH negative ions as the only negatively charged ions when dissolved in water are known as alkalis. Let's look at some examples. I have NaOH, aqua solution would give me Na plus plus OH negative ions. Now these are your examples of alkalis that you can remember. So the regular, uh, the common names are also important to remember. Okay, you have NaOH, the common name is caustic soda. You have KOH, the common name is caustic potash. Calcium hydroxide is known as slaked lime. The first two that you have are examples of strong alkalis also. And the next two are also examples of weak alkalis. Now, 
let's look at one more thing not all bases are soluble in water so therefore not all bases are alkalies okay let's look at an example of the bases which are not soluble in water so we do not call them alkalies so the examples would be feoh whole thrice that is ferric hydroxide and cuoh whole twice you can call it cupric hydroxide are bases very very important are bases but not alkalies because they are insoluble in water okay students i hope you are able to follow so far now students one more thing to remember is that i will give you the notes i will share everything that you have on the screen and if you require anything else other than these more questions to practice more understanding of a particular concept make sure you drop a message on the comment section so that whatever you need I, actually it reaches me so that i can accordingly respond on the same all right so let's move on to classification of bases so strong bases and weak bases why do we call them why do i have it written as slash alkali because whenever we talk about strong and weak base we are mixing it in water so if a base is not able to mix in water that there is no point in it we won't be able to understand the strength of it so bases which when dissolved in water produce a large number of oh negative ions are called strong bases okay so i have naoh and koh as examples so bases which when dissolved in water produce oh negative ions large number of oh negative ions are called strong bases you can also say that these one these are the ones which completely ionize your strong bases would be strong electrolytes also that means they would have a higher efficiency of conducting electricity because they have a lot of number of ions present in them moving on the other side weak bases or weak alkalies so bases which when dissolved in water produce less number of oh negative ions are called weak bases or weak alkalies this we can also say that these are the ones which partially ionize that means a part of them would also contain molecules along with ions it won't be just molecules uh, it won't be just ions it would have some molecules along with that because they have partially ionized so they do conduct electricity but the the power or the level of conduction would be comparatively smaller than your strong bases because of less number of ions present in the solution now moving on to the second type of classification depending on their acidity so acidity of a base is defined as the number of hydroxide ions produced when one molecule of the base is dissolved in water so i have one molecule of a base i dissolve it in water the number of hydroxide ions given out would tell me how much acidity is there what is the acidity of that particular base so let's look at examples mono acidic base one molecule of base will give you one ion of hydroxide that means naoh gives you one oh negative so mono acidic base dia acidic base gives you two hydroxides so caoh whole twice will give you two oh negative ions 2 oh means diabasic moving ahead to tria base tria acidic base tria acidic base will give you 3 oh negative ions so 3 oh negative ions you can see it right here now the now these are the ones which are soluble in water okay you dissolve them in water you take one molecule of the base you dissolve it in water and you see how many hydroxides you are getting hydroxide ions you are getting but the ones the bases which are not soluble in water how do we identify what is the acidity for those bases so the number of replaceable hydroxide ions identifies the acidity of that base so water for water in soluble bases acidity is equal to the number of replaceable oh ions 
in one molecule of that base so you look at the formula of that molecule you see how many replaceable hydroxide ions do i have and that gives you the acidity of that base let's look at these examples feoh whole thrice would give you acidity of 3 because you have three hydroxide ions then cupric hydroxide would give you 2 because as because you have two hydroxide ions okay i hope the basic understanding of what is a base and classification of the bases are clear moving ahead we have preparation of bases how do we prepare bases so we have a lot of methods in this one so make sure that you pay attention from here on so the method number 1 from metals so when we have metals they react with oxygen and they give you bases why is that because when we look at the definition of bases it clearly says metallic oxides or metallic hydroxides right so how do we form metallic oxide take a metal take oxygen combine them metallic oxide so let's look at example sodium plus oxygen would give you na2o that is sodium oxide now students if you want to understand how do we form the formula for the compound like how did i get na2o please let me know in the comment section if you have any confusion related to this because for that i'll make a separate video and i'll explain you how do we form compounds how do we use the valencies and form the compound formulas okay let's move on to magnesium plus oxygen giving us mgo second method by the action of water on active metals now again try to remember it from the definition of bases the definition of bases said metallic oxides or metallic hydroxides so we just understood how to form metallic oxides now let's look at how to form metallic hydroxides okay so what do we need we need a metal we need water and that gives us a metallic hydroxide so 2 na plus 2 h2o gives us naoh plus hydrogen gas potassium k plus h2o will give me koh plus h2 calcium plus water will give me caoh whole twice plus h2 so this is the basic way of in which you can form you can get metallic hydroxides moving on method number 3 by the action of water on water soluble metallic or basic oxides or basic anhydrides okay now when we were working on the preparation of acids i explained you what is basic oxide and what is basic anhydride what do we mean by that so if you have any confusion right here please go back a bit to the preparation of acids i did explain uh, these with the help of examples so i told you that if i have a basic oxide if i have a metallic oxide and uh, on combining it with water if i have any oxide on combining it with water if i am getting a base we can also call it basic oxide if i have any other oxide for example non metallic oxide and on combining it with water if i am getting an acid i would call that acid anhydride or acidic base acidic oxide okay so let's look at this one metal oxide so na2o plus h2o would give me naoh K2O plus water will give me KOH. CaO plus water will give me CaOH whole twice. So you don't have to learn these equations if you can understand the basic relation between how things are working. You won't have to learn equations. There will be very few number of equations you'll have to learn. Others will come by logic. Okay. If you want me to make one video on only the equations of this chapter, please let me know. I can do that too. in which we just discuss how are we making a pattern of these equations so that we don't learn them moving on to method number 4 so method number 4 is by double decomposition or double displacement reaction so you have salt solution plus an alkali which would give you a basic hydroxide and a normal salt okay so what is a normal salt when we do salts and we do the types of salts then we'll discuss what is a normal salt okay for now you can just write it down as normal salt 
So FeCl3 that is a salt solution plus NaOH that is your alkali will give you FeOH whole thrice that is reddish brown in color plus NaCl. This is your precipitate. Similarly, CuSO4 plus NaOH gives you CuOH whole twice and Na2SO4. And this CuOH whole twice, please remember that it is pale blue in color. FeOH whole thrice is reddish brown in color. Now, AlCl3 plus NH4OH would give you ALOH whole thrice plus NH4Cl. I hope this much is clear. Moving on to method 5. By action of oxygen on metal sulphides. So if you remember from the acids, preparation of acids, we did that if you have a sulphide, it will always give you SO2, that is sulphur dioxide. So if you have a metal sulphide reacting with oxygen, it will give you metallic oxide plus sulphur dioxide. So if in the exam they ask you that, okay, I have a meta metallic, okay, I have oxygen combining with compound X and I'm getting an output that is sulphur dioxide. Can you tell me the type of radical metal your compound X will have? So that will have a metal sulphide. It will have a sulphide with it because you are getting sulphur dioxide in the output products. So you should know the equation both the ways. So ZNS plus oxygen will give you ZNO plus SO2. PBS plus O2 will give you PBO plus SO2. CUS plus O2 will give you CUO plus SO2. Moving on to number 6 method. By decomposition of salts. Okay. Now decomposition of salts means that you are providing heat. You have a salt. You are providing heat and it breaks down. So the two types of salts that we would work here would, would be carbonates and nitrates. Now think logically. Carbonates will give me carbon dioxide output. Nitrates will give me NO2 as the output. Okay. That is the basic output that you should remember. So I have CaCO3 that is giving me CaO plus CO2. CuCO3 would give me CuO plus CO2. So what do we make out from here? We make out from here that your carbonates are giving you carbon dioxide in the output. Moving on to nitrates. So you have CaNO3 whole twice which is giving us CaO, NO2 and oxygen. ZnNO3 because when you are talking about nitrates you have extra oxygen there. So ZnNO3 would give you ZnO plus NO2 plus oxygen. So I hope this much makes sense. Now let's look at the exceptional cases. So since we started basis we had less exceptional cases so far. So let's come back on exceptional cases. What is acid, bases and salts without exceptional cases? Everything is in exceptional cases. So let's start with the note. First one, sodium and potassium carbonates do not decompose on heating. Okay, It won't show any decomposition on heating. Second, sodium and potassium nitrates do not give metal, met, metal oxide on heating. They give metal nitride and oxygen on heating. So that means if I have KNO3, that will give me KNO2 plus oxygen. So you get potassium nitride instead of what? Instead of potassium oxide. So sodium and potassium nitrates do not give metal oxide. So potassium, sodium and potassium nitrates do not give metallic oxides. They give metal nitrides instead. Okay. I hope this much makes sense. This last method, that is the seventh method. Now go back and think about the definition of bases. The definition of basis said you have metal oxides, metal hydroxides or ammonium hydroxide. So the first two methods we did was metal oxides, metal hydroxides and the third one that you should work on is preparation of ammonium hydroxide. So ammonia plus water gives us ammonium hydroxide. NH3 plus H2O gives me NH4OH. You have ammonia gas combining with water giving you ammonium hydroxide. Let's move on to properties of bases. So you do have physical and chemical properties in this. 
once we are done with this part then we'll again come back on few questions and we'll see how we are doing on that so stay tuned breathe in take some water and let's move on so properties of bases i have physical and chemical properties so let's start with physical properties first is taste what do you remember about acids acids had a sour taste what do we know about bases they have a sharp and bitter taste how do you remember that or how how do you know what kind of taste that is so if sometime you are taking bath and the soapy water goes in your mouth so that is a very bitter and strange taste that is how your bases taste that is a base in nature they are soapy substances so, so see they are soapy substances they are slippery to touch okay we'll come on this why does it happen okay they are strong electrolytes why are they strong electrolytes because they have good number of ions present in the solution when we combine them with water fourth they show a mild corrosive action slightly uh, slightly burning on skin that means they are not very corrosive but they are slight corrosive that means consistent use of a base on your hand or on your skin will cause uh, damage and will sh start showing on the skin once or twice it's fine it is drying out your skin but if you have a consistent usage of a strong alkali your hands will show the corrosive action it has caused now action on indicators litmus paper so bases turn red litmus to blue they turn methyl orange orange to yellow and they turn phenolphthalein from colorless to pink so i hope this much makes sense an important reasoning question that just does show up is insoluble bases do not show any effect on indicators why the reason is that for indicators to show an effect what do we need we need moisture with that we need water with it and why is that that is because indicators have an ability to identify ions and when do we get ions we get ions when we have water combined with it if you do not have water ion formation will not happen and the indicator will not identify the particular ion so indicator doesn't care what kind of compound it is indicator just identifies if it is oh negative ion or if it is h plus ion what kind of ion hits the indicator will tell you the change on that so insoluble bases do not show any effect on indicators because of lack of water so no moisture now chemical properties so this is chemical properties not of acids chemical properties of bases okay now strong alkalis absorb carbon dioxide from air to form carbonates that means if you have an alkali lying around and it is in open air it will start absorbing carbon dioxide from air and it will start forming its corresponding carbonates so let's look at that naoh plus carbon dioxide will give you na2co3 plus h2o then i have koh plus carbon dioxide will give me k2co3 plus h2o okay moving on to the second chemical property to neutralize acids to form salt and water so always you'll have that that is acid plus base gives salt plus water NaOH plus HCl will give NaCl plus H2O. This equation, I think, you have been doing since the day you started learning chemistry. So this is a very, very common equation for you to put it in every neutralization reaction as an example. Moving on to the third one, their reaction with salts of heavy metal. So you have a metallic salt plus you have a base. It will give you an insoluble hydroxide plus a regular salt. Let's look at it. and when we talk about heavy metals we are talking about co copper iron and zinc these are heavy metals so cuso4 plus nh4oh always remember it is a weak alkali cuso4 plus nh4oh will give you cuoh whole twice plus nh4 whole twice so4 few of these reactions will again come when we are doing analytical chemistry so make sure you are understanding the kind of color change that's happening 
and the kind of precipitate that we are getting all right students let's move on zno4 plus naoh will give me znoh whole twice plus na2so4 so cuoh whole twice as i previously mentioned pale blue ppt zinc gelatinous white ppt and fdoh whole twice is dirty green ppt if you remember initially we did fe oh whole thrice which was reddish brown ppt and fe oh whole twice is dirty green ppt okay now these hydroxides are insoluble precipitates now let's look at an exception the hydroxides of zinc aluminum and lead so you have zinc aluminum and lead being amphoteric by nature dissolve in excess noh or koh but other hydroxides do not all right let's look at what do we mean by amphoteric amphoteric means that if i have a compound and it is reacting with a base it will give me salt plus water and if the same compound is reacting with an acid that also it will give me salt plus water let's look at it let's look at the basic understanding i have compound x it reacts with an acid okay so this compound x behaves like a base and it gives you salt plus water and the same compound x when it reacts with a base it starts reacting like a mild acid and it gives you salt plus water again so such compounds which have the ability to behave like an acid in presence of a base and behave like a base in presence of an acid are known as amphoteric oxides or amphoteric in nature compounds that are amphoteric in nature okay so the hydroxides of zinc aluminum and lead okay remember that zinc aluminum and lead they are amphoteric by nature therefore being amphoteric what would happen is they will dissolve in excess naoh and koh okay but other oxides do not okay you can take a look at this equation znoh whole twice it behaves like an acid right now it gives you salt plus water okay so it's reacting with twice of naoh giving you na2zno2 that is sodium zincate plus water okay so in this particular case your zinc oxide is behaving like an acid okay now moving on to the fourth classification so to the fourth chemical property when alkalies are warmed with an ammonium salt ammonia gas is given out example reaction of naoh and koh with nh4cl so naoh plus ammonium chloride will give me nacl plus water plus ammonia gas similarly koh is reacting with ammonia salt giving you kcl plus water plus ammonia gas okay i hope this makes sense and this is an important one out of all the properties this is an important one because this is not this does not have a particular pattern you will have to remember that because others will have a slight pattern going on but the fourth chemical property doesn't really have a pattern so students i'm sorry but you'll have to learn this one okay now moving on to general uses of bases we are about to end bases so congratulations let's move ahead to uses sodium hydroxide helps in manufacture of soaps potassium hydroxide manufacture of salts and soaps then magnesium hydroxide as an antacid that means when you have acidity um you eat something spicy or uh, or something bad from outside your body will start secreting more acid and the acid can come slightly up into the esophagus when it starts touching your esophagus and slightly comes into the food pipe it causes a burning sensation in the food pipe that particular feeling is known as acidity to calm down acidity we generally take milk of magnesia so milk of magnesia is a tablet which is basic in nature once you consume milk of magnesia it tries to calm down your acidity because they would combine together and neutralize 
Similarly, moving on, we have ammonium hydroxide. This is used to remove grease stains from clothes. Magnesia in making refact uh, refactory bricks. So these are all the uses that you can go through. Now I have some common questions that are asked. All right, students, are we ready? So we have covered acids. We have covered bases. Congratulations. Let's move on to common questions of bases. What are alkalies? So alkalies we have discussed bases which are soluble in water and gives us OH negative ions are called alkalies. Which of these statements is true? So students, let's look at if you can figure it out. Okay, I'm giving you half a minute. You can pause the video, think, and then check if what you thought was correct. All right, all right. So all bases are alkalies or all alkalies are bases. So which one is correct? The second statement is correct. All alkalies are bases, but not all bases are alkalies because we did look at two exceptional cases in which it was a base, but the base was not soluble in water. So it was not an alkali. So the second one is true. This is true and this is false. If you write this in the exam, you have to mention the exceptional cases. You have to give in the names for your ferric hydroxide and your cupric hydroxide. That those are bases but not soluble in water. Name a hydroxide which is insoluble in water. So you can name the cupric hydroxide or you can name ferric hydroxide. Anything is fine. Why are bases slippery to touch? Okay. Now. One thing to understand is that bases combine with oil to give us soap. Okay, so we have caustic soda that you have KOH, you have NaOH. These are strong alkalis. These strong alkalis combine with oils and gives us soap. Now, when we touch them, what happens is our hand has natural oils in them. So, when we touch them, these natural oils combine with the alkalis and they form so soap. That is the reason when we touch them, they are slippery to touch because they are soapy in nature. Moving on, insoluble bases do not show a change on indicators. Why? So students, we did discuss this. I would like you to answer this in the comment section and I want to see how much you understand from here. Moving on to the sixth question. And sixth question is the last question for bases. The skin has and needs natural oils. Why is it advisable to wear gloves when working with strong alkalis? Okay, so as I just mentioned that we have natural oils on the skin and strong alkalis when they combine with oils, they give us soap. So when we are using uh, strong alkalis very regularly, so strong alkalis will take up all the oils that naturally exist in the skin and dry out our skin. So if you have any job, if you are doing a job in which you are regularly using strong alkalis, your hands will dry out and will start looking quite brittle from places and you may start getting cracks because the skin is losing the no natural moisture. Therefore it is advisable to wear gloves when, wearing, when working with strong alkalis. Okay, I hope students you are all hyped up and you have covered acids and bases. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Now, take a breather, pause the video, drink some water and come back to start with salts. Okay, so students before we start with salts, I completely forgot a very small topic that is your pH. So we'll talk about pH and then we come on salts. So what is pH? pH is technically, so we have discussed indicators so far. So you know you have indicator like litmus paper, phenolphthalein, methyl orange. So these are the uh, indicators which tell you that okay, this particular solution is acidic and this particular solution is basic. So those are that kind of indicators. Your pH, your pH paper, pH scale, this pH scale is a universal indicator. So apart from telling whether you have an acid or a base, it also tells you the strength of it. 
that means if it is an acid how strong the acid is and if it is a base how strong the base is okay so that is the reason we call it the universal indicator now let's look at the first point so the first point is the acidic basic or neutral solution can be ascertained by ionization that means when you have ionization happening that means your uh, compound is being broken down into h plus and oh negative ions so what kind of ionization happen how many ions you get identifies what is your acidic basic or neutral solution let's look at the definition for your universal indicator the universal indicator is a mixture of indicator dyes that gives a spectrum of colors depending upon how acidic or alkaline a solution is so apart from telling whether it is alkaline or acidic it also tells us how much acidic or how much alkaline the solution is and in this case when we talk about this universal indicator it gives you indication on the basis of the colors so universal indicators give different colors at different concentrations of hydrogen ions in a solution okay let's see why hydrogen ions when we talk about ph so ph p means potens what does potens mean potens means strength okay and h indicates here hydrogen ions okay so the strength of hydrogen ions the number of hydrogen ions present in a solution helps the ph paper identify as to whether it is going on the acidic side or whether it is going on the basic side so i hope this much makes sense to you now let's look at the ph scale what is a ph scale so a ph scale is like a scale like this okay so you have from 0 to 14 numbers and you have a color code on that so it's the wibgeor color code that you have starting from 14th till coming to 0 you have violet indigo blue green so all two sections so two sections violet two sections indigo blue green yellow orange and red at point number 7 you have neutral that means when you have green color that means that is your neutral solution then moving on to the increasing side that is towards 14 we have increasing alkaline nature and if we move towards 0 that is your increasing acidic nature now one very important thing that you should remember here is that this is a ph scale okay this is a ph scale you do not dip your ph scale in the solution you dip a paper in a solution that paper is known as the ph paper you dip ph paper in the solution it gives you a particular color bring that to the ph scale put it on the ph scale and see where does it match the best and that will be your particular identification of acidity or alkalinity okay so you do not dip ph scale anywhere ph scale stays in one place dip ph paper bring it to ph scale and compare so i hope this much is okay the ph of a solution is the negative logarithm of the base of 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration expressed in moles per liter so this is the formula that you need to remember moving ahead on importance of ph in everyday life so if we talk about our body the regular um, or the basic range in which our body can regularly exist is a very narrow range from 7 to 7.8 anything above that or anything below that will make us sick and we'll have to accordingly uh, the doctors will accordingly give us solutions that will try to bring down the ph of our body and certain diseases in our body can be easily detected if the ph is different for example if your kidneys are not functioning properly that means you will have a different ph level because the urine is still in your blood so the ph change can easily identify help the doctors identify what kind of disease you are getting moving ahead to in agriculture so different type of plants or different crops have a different range of acidity or alkalinity medium in which they grow the best 
For example, rice, it grows in slightly acidic soil. Sugar cane grows well in a neutral solution or neutral state, neutral soil. Citrus fruits grow very well in alkaline soil. Moving ahead to acid rain. So whenever you have acid rain, whenever you have regular rain happening, if the pH at any time drops below 5.6, that type, that particular rain is known as acid rain. And acid rain is, uh, acid rain would contain your sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid, carbonic acid. How does that happen? Because of the pollutants in the sky. The pollutants in the sky could be your uh, SO2, it could be your nitrates. So when they combine with water, they make acid and that is your acid rain. Acid rain, if it falls on soil, it reduces the fertility of the soil. If it falls in water, of course, it will kill a lot of marine life. So a lot of damage happens. Moving on to the fourth part, in medicines. So of course, if a, a pH value of blood and urine can help them identify what kind of disease we have, and accordingly, in medicines, they would increase or decrease the acid or the base depending upon the requirement of the body. Then moving on to fifth part, in digestive system. So in our digestive system, the, uh, high, the HCL that is secreted is for digestion in the stomach. But at certain points, when you eat something outside, if you have eaten something very spicy, the body can generate excess of HCL. That when that excess of HCL is produced, you get a feeling of really high irritation, burning sensation, that is acidity. To deal with acidity, you have to take a medication that is known as antacid. And the most common one is milk of magnesia. This is a mild acid, which when you consume, will slowly try to reduce the effect of the acid in body. And it gives you a calming effect. So that is in digestive system. Moving on to in preventing tooth decay. So what happens is if we are eating sugars, if we are eating um, chocolates, anything that is sweet. So the sweet thing, what happens is it gets stuck in our tooth. So whenever it is stuck in our teeth and uh, they slowly start degrading. So when they start degrading by mixing with saliva, they start making acidic. They start getting acidic in nature. And the acid can start getting deposited in between the teeth. Wherever you have spaces, your teeth cavity or everywhere in your, uh, in your mouth. If this falls below 5.5, that's when your teeth will start corroding. To avoid this, we recommend always get, you know, uh, brushing your teeth before you go to bed. Why is that? Because your toothpaste that you're using is basic in nature. So when you're brushing your teeth, you're neutralizing the effect of the acid that is formed in the mouth. Hence, uh, you are helping your teeth to stay healthy and not corrode and prevent tooth decay. Moving on to the seventh one, bee sting leaves acid in the body. So when the bee stings, uh, it leaves some acid in the body. It is highly painful and irritating and it swells up. To avoid that, you can use or rub some baking soda on it and on the stung area and it gives relief. It helps you calm down. Now, moving on to our salts. So salts portion, a lot of portion from salts has been uh, deleted. So uh, you just have a very small portion. So salt, what is salt? Salt is a compound formed by partial or total replacement of ionizable hydrogen atoms of an acid by metallic ion or an ammonium ion. Now, what do we mean by this? For example, you have HCl. That is your acid. It reacts with Zn. And what do you get? So your hydrogen is displaced. Okay. It is replaced from HCl. And you get ZnCl2. So you get ZnCl2 plus hydrogen gas. Correct. So what is happening here? Completely display a replacement of your hydrogen in an acid. By what? by a metallic ion or an ammonium ion will give you a salt. So this ZnCl2 that you have received is a salt. Now this, this salt, now if you read the definition again, salt is a compound formed by partial or total replacement of the ionizable hydrogen atoms of an acid by a metallic ion or an ammonium ion. So in the equation that I just wrote, 
you have complete or total replacement of hydrogen ions okay if we think about uh, let's say partial so partial one you can look at this example NaNO3 plus H2SO4 gives you NaHSO4 and HNO3 so HNO3 that means your NO3 has a H still there and this is also a salt okay this is partial replacement so you had two ionizable hydrogens but only one was replaced and the other one stayed there so this was partial replacement if you are doing the same reaction at above 200 degree celsius in that case both the hydrogens will get replaced so what will you get you'll get NaNO3 plus H2SO4 giving you Na2SO4 so you do not have hydrogen in Na2SO4 plus HNO3 so this is complete replacement this these are the two ways your salts are formed okay now you have now if you look at the ionic definition so salt is an ionic compound which dissociates in water that means you mix it in water to yield a positive ion other than hydrogen ion uh, okay and other than OH negative ion in the uh, negative ions so what do we mean by that we mean that for example I have NaCl I ionize that in water so I get Na plus plus Cl minus if you take up the previous one you have Na2SO4 what do you get you get Na plus plus SO4 2 minus so now if we read the equation different definition again the definition says salt is an ionic compound ok we understand that which dissociates in water we understand that too to yield a positive ion yes it is yielding a positive ion other than hydrogen and it is also yielding a negative ion other than OH negative so I hope the ionic definition makes sense to you now now classification of salts you only have three classification of salts in the syllabus this year that is normal salt acidic salt and basic salt if I talk about normal salts so normal salt are the salts formed by, com by complete replacement so whatever replaceable hydrogen atoms you had complete replacement of hydrogen will give you a normal salt ok so normal salt are the salts formed by complete replacement you have to remember this this is a key point of the ionizable hydrogen atoms of what of the ionizable hydrogen atoms of an acid by a metallic or ammonium ion so the entire definition is repeated from what we know the definition of salts the only thing that stays here is complete replacement so take an example HCl plus NaOH gives me NaCl plus H2O H2SO4 plus 2NaOH gives me Na2SO4 plus 2H2O so complete replacement no hydrogens can be seen here ok more examples can be these sodium carbonate, sodium phosphate, sodium acetate ok moving on to acid salts now in this acid salts you will have some hydrogen left out ok so acid salts are formed by the partial replacement of ionizable hydrogen ions uh, and this is a polybasic acid with a metal or an ammonium ion so what happens in this case is you have a hydrogen left out and why do we call it an acidic salt because when you have the salt you mix it in water it gives you H plus ions outside these H plus ions of course we understand that whenever you have H plus ions that particular compound shows acidic behavior so this salt when we dissolve it in water will show me acidic behavior because of H plus ions therefore it is called acidic salts or acid salts when you look at the formulas for acid salts you always can identify a hydrogen in between the examples that you can remember would be sodium hydrogen sulfide disodium hydrogen phosphate sodium dihydrogen phosphate you always have a hydrogen there moving on to the third type so the third type is basic salt in a basic salt you have OH in between and when you ionize this in water you mix this particular salt in water you get OH negative ions and since you have OH negative ions this salt solution will show you all the basic properties now let's look at the definition basic salts are formed 
by partial replacement of hydroxyl group and then you can just match up the equation so i hope these examples make sense you have oh negative there let's look at a couple of equations so pboh whole twice that is a diabasic base plus hcl will give you pboh chlorine plus h2o and same thing you can do here MgOH whole twice. What is MgOH whole twice? That is milk of magnesia plus HCl gives MgOHCl plus H2O. Now, the small part that is last bit of it that you have to remember is action of dilute acids on salts. Okay, so you have salts. Uh, your salts can be carbonates, bicarbonates, sulfites, sulfates, and then you are adding acid to it. So these are very common reactions that you have already done either. you have done it in the chemical properties of acids or some other part of the chapter so you have done these so you just have to understand the basic knowledge um or you can say the basic pattern that we discussed so if i have carbonates or bicarbonates reacting with an acid i have carbonates bicarbonates that will give me carbon dioxide okay so that is what's happening carbonates bicarbonates plus dilute acid giving me carbon dioxide okay so let's look at a couple of equations you can pick up let's say these ones cuco3 plus hcl gives me cucl2 plus water plus co2 so this is not something new that we are doing right now we have discussed this in the chemical properties of acids okay so if you are confused you can go back to the acids part and do that again If you're still not able to get it please leave a comment in the comment section and I will help you out Moving on to decomposition of sulfites or hydrogen sulfites by acids Now if you remember if you have sulfites or hydrogen sulfites that will always give you SO2 So any salt reacting with HCl will give you salt plus water plus SO2 sulfites hydrogen sulfites will give me so2 okay so take a take the example cuso3 plus hno3 giving me cuno3 whole twice plus h2o plus so2 okay so if you do remember the equations from the chemical properties of acids you can use them here also it's not necessary that you have to remember all of these equations just one or two example of each category is fine and that is sufficient for the chapter okay now decomposition of sulfites by acids now i have k2s and when you have sulfites you always get a rotten egg smelling gas that is h2s so sulfides rotten egg smelling gas h2s so k2s plus h2so4 k2so4 plus h2s zns plus h2so4 give me znso4 plus h2s so students i hope this makes sense to you so salts is a very small portion very easy portion the kind of questions you may get from this is they'll give you the formula of the salt or name of the salt and they will ask you what category it will fall in so very easy to identify if you have the formula given if you have to identify acid salt you will always see an h If you have to identify basic salt, you'll have an OH. If both of them are not there, then that means it is a normal salt. So these are the type of questions that you can see in your exams. All right, my ICSC warriors, you have done an amazing job today. You have successfully covered acids, bases, and salts in one shot with all the details that you need to know, and along with some important questions. So you did a wonderful job. Just pat your back and be proud of yourself. Now, if you have any questions, any doubts from acids, bases, and salts, feel free to drop a comment in the comments section. If you think you really liked the video, please feel free to share that with your friends and family members and help help us spread the word. If there is any particular chapter you want me to target, or if there is any help that you need in any particular area. please do mention that as well in the next session we plan on starting with electrolysis other than the playlist you'll also get an electrolysis one shot video 
So if there's anything else that is missing out, if there's any suggestions from your side, I would be I would be happy to get them. So thank you so much. Let's catch up in the next session. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.